the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York. The nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Dr. Gillespie, I don't care how strong a hunch you have. Things have been quiet around the hospital for over a week. What could happen? Parker, anything could happen. A meteor could fall on the east wing. We could have an epidemic of bubonic plague. Carew could suddenly become intelligent. Oh, that's ridiculous. You mean about Carew? Well, I guess that's a little far-fetched. I mean, the whole idea is ridiculous. Well, Just because you've got a feeling of some sort is no reason to believe... Morning, Dr. Gillespie. Good morning, Parker. morning. Hmm, Parker, you've got that gleam of battle in your eye. What's up? Oh, it's Dr. Gillespie. He has a hunch some catastrophe is about to happen. Well, don't worry about it. I've seen his hunches turn out wrong before. Maybe so, Jimmy. Maybe so. But you've also seen them turn out right. Sure. Sometimes. Law of averages. Ah, law of averages. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Hero, for the first time in my life, I hope you really do have a crisis. Oh, I do, Dr. Gillespie. We do. Blair Hospital do. Uh, does. What sort of a crisis, Dr. Carew? Oh, it's most upsetting. A new patient came in about an hour ago. Well, now, Carew, we've met that particular crisis successfully before. But you don't understand. This man has already disrupted hospital routine simply no end. What's he done? Dr. Kildare, he insists on keeping a pistol in his room and some kind of a musical instrument, a guitar, I believe he calls it, and he won't take his hat off. Won't take his hat off? Precisely, Dr. Kildare. Carew, what's the name of this problem patient? One that's quite in keeping with his occupation. Huh? He's with a Wild West show that's playing across town. A professional cowboy, he calls himself. His name is Buffalo Barney McClure. Oh, Dr. Carew, I still don't understand what disturbs you so much. Dr. Kildare, if you can imagine a man with long hair, a mustache, and a goatee sitting up in bed in a hospital gown holding a pistol and wearing a ten-gallon hat, well, it's a perfectly horrible sight. <laughs> I want to tell you that I ain't never been sick a day in my whole life till this happened. I see. And the pain seems to center in the upper abdomen around to here. Oh, oh out. careful, Doc. My energy is mighty tender. They're mighty tender. Uh, Mr. McClure, what about that fall you took from your horse last night at the show? Oh, shuckings, that weren't nothing. I've been throwed by cayuses ever since I was hip high to a tumble bug. But it did shake you up a little, didn't it? Well, it knocked my darn bridge work out, but that fall didn't have nothing to do with this year bellyache. I felt fine till this morning. Mm, sometimes internal injuries don't show up for hours or even days after an accident, Mr. McClure. Call me Buffalo, Doc. I ain't used to this year Mr. McClure stuff. All right, Buffalo. Well, Dr. Gillespie, apparently the next step is a fluoroscopic examination. Yes, yes, sure, I know. Parker's getting an x-ray room assigned now. Boys, I sure do hope there ain't nothing real bad wrong with me. Oh, let's assume not for the present anyway. Sure would hate to think that I was a cashing in my chips. Well, even if it is an injury, it probably won't be serious. Only time I ever needed a saw bones before was to dig a bullet out of my shoulder. Now, say, boys, I've been figuring on asking you something. Oh, what's that? That feller that's the boss of this year's spread, that there, Dr. Carew. 
Is he got any kin folks out west anywhere? Crew? Oh, I don't think so. Well, I used to know a fella years ago named Three Fingered Tom Carew. Sure would like to meet up with some of his next of kin. Well, I doubt very much if any relative of Dr. Carew's would let himself be called Three Fingered Tom. Come in, come in, come in. Oh, it's you, Parker. Come in, come in, come in. Dr. Gillespie, I've got all the arrangements taken care of. You can have X-ray room number eight in 30 minutes. Oh, fine, fine, Parker. Fine. Well, boys, ain't none of you gonna give me a howdy duty to this charming little lady? Well. Parker, this is Mr. Buffalo Barney McClure. Miss Parker will be your nurse. How do you do, Mr. Buffalo? Well, now, I reckon you're just about the prettiest little urine that's come down to shoot in about four months of Sunday. Really? Buffalo, are you quite sure you know what you're saying? Why, you doggone right, boys. This is my kind of a filly, fresh and sweet as a cattle range in April. <laughs> Kildare? There's only one explanation. This man's worse shape than we thought. All right now, Buffalo. All you have to do is just stand there behind the fluorescent screen and relax. Like this, huh? Yeah, that's right now. We may have to try a barium milkshake later, but we'll have a look first without it. Are you ready, Dr. Gillespie? Anytime, Jimmy. Anytime. Parker. Turn off that examination light. All right, Doctor. Well, boys, uh, you sure this ain't gonna hurt me none? Don't you worry, Buffalo. I'm right here with you. Yeah, I'd say that any danger which may be threatening you is not from the X-ray machine. Well, but it makes a fella feel kind of immodest to have a contraption of looking right through your innards this way. Uh, don't worry. You won't feel a thing. Ready, Jimmy? Right. Mm hmm. Let's see now. Miss Savagas here, and... Oh, this would be a mighty fine thing for a poker game. You could see right through the car. Mm -hmm. Lungs are clear. Y you could see the aces. How about it, boys? Are you finding anything? Not yet. You know, there seems to be some distortion of the stomach. Yeah, bones. I noticed that, Jimmy. I... But what I don't see... But look, look, look. Over here. Huh? Well, now, what in the tarnation can... Don't you recognize oh. what it is? Recognized by the great horn spoon. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, boys, let's have a showdown. What am I suffering from? Your teeth, Buffalo. My teeth? Mm-hmm. From that dental bridge work you lost last night. You swallowed it. It's lodged in your stomach. Well, holy cow. That's why I couldn't find it nowhere. Well, you weren't looking in the right place, that's all. <laughs> Anyway, we found it now, and as soon as we get it out of your stomach, you'll be in first-class shape again. Now, wait just a minute. There ain't nobody gonna cut me over. Oh, I don't think an operation will be necessary. I think we can get the thing out with an esophagoscope. Esophagoscope? What? Uh, esophagoscope. Oh. It's an instrument designed to reach down a patient's throat and into his stomach. Just like a darn sword swallower. No, you don't, boys. That is out. Now, mm -hmm. let's be reasonable about this. If that thing isn't removed right away, it may cause serious trouble for you. I don't give a hoot and a holler what it may cause. And there's a six shooter down there in my room that says there ain't nobody going to cut me open nor shove nothing down my throat. And that's for sure. That's for dang sure. <laughs> Well, I don't know what to do, Dr. Gillespie. If he won't give his permission, we, we can't force him to go through with it. Oh, confound it, Jimmy. He's got to go through with it. He can't go walking around with his stomach full of teeth. <laughs> oh, I feel so sorry for poor Buffalo, and he's such a wonderful man, too. The cattle range in April Parker is speaking. That's just his way of being gallant and charming. Why, you've got yourself thrown, hogtied, and ready for branding before he's even swung his lariat. That's all right, Dr. Gillespie. You can tell by the way he talks. He knows a pretty girl when he sees one. No, come in, Dr. Oh, Carew. Gentlemen, I just saw your diagnosis in the Buffalo Barney case. Yes, another oddity for the hospital file. That man himself is an oddity, Dr. Kildare. Careful, Carew. You're speaking of the man Parker loved. Oh! Why, Miss Parker, I certainly hope you're not guilty of any irregularity. Of course not. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie, sometimes you make me so mad, I... Oh! Hmm, an eccentric sort of woman. <laughs> well, fortunately, 
gentlemen, it shouldn't take long to remove those dentures and get rid of this buffalo person once and for all. I'm afraid it's not that simple, Dr. Carew. He's refused to let us do anything at all for him. But he can't do that. Why, he's already incensed the entire fourth floor by playing that guitar and singing at the top of his voice. The man is utterly mad. Oh, now, that's unkind, Dr. Carew. Besides, Buffalo seems to have quite a high regard for you. In fact, he was asking whether you might be related to an old acquaintance of his named uh, Three-Fingered Tom Carew. <laughs> Dr. Kildare, I can assure you that no member of my family has ever been referred to as Three-Fingered Tom. Oh, that's exactly what we told Buffalo Barney. Yeah, and in a way, it's too bad, Carew. You and our elderly cowboy patient might have become close friends. <laughs> I can hardly imagine myself becoming close friends, as you call it. Yes, mm. I know, Dr. True. <laughs> However, we have an idea. Idea? Yes. Yes, if you were to tell Buffalo Barney that you are related to Three-Fingered Tom, uh, uh, nephew, I think. Nephew? That's right, Sure. He believes you to be a relative of a friend of his. Then he'll accept your advice and give his permission for immediate treatment, don't you see? Not too clearly. Carew, it'll solve the problem in nothing flat. You think so? Yes. Oh, yes, indeed I do. And now we'll excuse you so you can go up and tell him right this minute. Uh, uh, Dr. Kildare, why are you pushing me? Well, we don't want to detain you, Dr. Carew. Ah, uh, here's the door. Oh, uh, dear, dear, dear. Confound it, Jimmy. He'll bungle it just as sure as you're born. Well, you had a premonition that something was going to happen. I don't know. Maybe we'd better follow him. Well, there's Buffalo's room right ahead, Jimmy. Everything seems to be quiet around the old corral. Yes, even the guitar is apparently getting a temporary rest. <laughs> What's the matter, Carew? Good heavens, gentlemen, run for your life. You whopper, run, sexy cow, fill your full of lead. I'll ventilate. She'll do it, too. Where's my breeches at? Hey, come on, come on in here. This room is empty. Now, 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 be calm, Dr. Carew. Now, what's this all about? Well, but I told him I, I was the nephew of Three-Fingered Tom. He reached for his gun. Oh. He says he's had a feud with that family, and he'll kill any of them on sight. Oh. Well, Carew, now we all have to go sometime. Oh. And at least you'll be dying with your boots on. Please, Dr. Gillespie, this is not an occasion for levity. There you are, Carew. Oh, dear. I've seen you sneak in here, you wall-eyed sidewinder. Now, Mr. Buffalo, let's be reasonable. You're going to meet your maker. You're drawing your final breath right now. Hey, take it easy. If you got any last words, spit them out. Oh, dear, I think I'm going to... Uh, well, lucky on it. Son of a gun keel right on over. Boys, get a doctor. Get a doctor. Buffalo, put that confounded pistol away before it goes off and hurts somebody. Why, heck, fire it ain't loaded with nothing but blanks. Hey, hey. Buffalo, Barney McClure wouldn't never shoot an unarmed man. I was just a fun in him. Oh, too bad he didn't know it. It's out like a light. Buffalo! Oh, Buffalo, are you all right? Oh, shucks, honey, I'm all right. But this year, Carew feller's done swoon plumb away. Well, good heavens. We've got to do something. Out of the mouths of babe. Parker, would it be too much of an imposition on a young filly to ask her to trot down to the dispensary and bring some smelling salts for uh, <clears throat> dangerous Dan Carew? <laughs> Return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Come on in, Jimmy. Come in. How's your patient? 
Oh, uh, self-styled grand old man of the West is propped up in bed serenading Prairie Flower Parker at the moment. And Carew? Well, he's resting quietly, locked up in his suite. Uh, he ought to be <laughs> locked up somewhere. I don't know. I think he'd manage to get into some kind of a predicament, even in a padded cell. Yeah, the hankum poof. And since that idea of ours didn't work, you still got the problem of Buffalo. Hmm. What are we going to do now? Release him and forget about him, as long as he's so confounded stubborn. Well, that's all we can do, I guess, unless he decides to cooperate. But I hate to leave it that way. It's dangerous. Yeah, that bridge work could start an irritation that might become pretty serious in a little while. But what can you do? It's just it. I don't know. Wish I did. Jimmy, a doctor can't afford to worry about impossibilities. Once he's done all he can, well, he's got to let it go at that. How can you be sure that you've done all you can? I mean, sometimes you have... Oh, the little ones are blooming in the spurs, but they won't bloom for me very long. Well, now, it's our little girl of the Golden West. Oh, I'm just so happy today, Dr. Gillespie, that it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. But why so starry-eyed, Parker? I didn't know you were such a great lover of Western folk songs. Oh, but it's the way Buffalo sings them, Dr. Kildare. Ah. He's terrific. Mm -hmm. Only a cowboy, sweetheart. He's such a man of the great outdoors. A man's man, if you know what I mean. Well, then where do you come in? I think that once a man has lived in the western range country, there's a flavor that clings to him the rest of his life. Yeah, sure. Especially to his boots. And what a life for a girl. <laughs> Up early in the morning to watch the rosy-fingered dawn steal out of the east. Uh -huh. While you're chopping firewood for the kitchen stove. Then down to the little house and back. <laughs> Gather up the eggs for breakfast. Oh, so you're going to keep chickens on the ranch. Well, a few hens, I think. Just for the eggs. Oh, none of this is real, of course, Dr. Gillespie. I'm just dreaming. That's uh, all. Well, Parker, as long as that's what you're doing, it'd be nice if you could dream up some way of getting Buffalo to let us take that bridge work from his stomach. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Dr. Kildare. He's already agreed. He's already what? Agreed to let you go ahead with the treatment. Ooh. You see, he's doing it for me. You should never underestimate a girl's influence on a man's heart. It's not his heart, Parker. It's his stomach. And if you're a girl, I'm a mere puling infant. Oh! You're looking a gift horse in the mouth, Dr. Gillespie. Come on, let's go to work. <laughs> Shucks, boys, when that fine little woman asked me to do it for her sake, I just melted away like a snowball in humor. Mm, well, Parker's usually better known for putting on the chill rather than taking it off. Well, I'll tell you, boys, when a pretty gal starts to sugaring me up, I get, <laughs> I get as skittish as a bobtail pony in fly time. <laughs> uh, and apparently the same effect can be achieved by a horse-faced old maid. Stop. I sure would hate to think you was catching some of them mad aspersions on that little oh, girl. Oh, no, Buffalo, nothing like that. Dr. Gillespie has a peculiar sense of humor, that's all. Yeah, I'm a veritable clown. As a matter of fact, I've often suspected him of being an unsuccessful suitor for the affections of that same little lady. Killed her. Well, Doc, all I can say is let the fight be fair and I hope the best man wins. Well, I hope not. What the tarnation would I do with her? I mean... Well, howdy, Miss Parker. Howdy, Buffalo. I sure hope you're... Oh, Dr. Gillespie. Howdy, Parker. I, uh, have everything ready now in the x-ray room. You can go ahead whenever you like. Good. Let's get started, then. Now, just hold your horses a minute there, boys. I was hoping that maybe we could do this thing, uh, uh tomorrow or, or maybe the next now, day. There's or... no point in putting it off. The sooner it's done, the quicker it's over. Yeah, but doggone it. More I think about having that easel of what you call it shoved down my gut, the more just one. But Buffalo. Uh huh. You just can't back out now. Why you you already promised the little lady there. Yeah, I know it, y'all. Oh, darn it, but I'd rather be hog tied and branded. Courage, Buffalo. The eyes of Texas are upon you. They are. And the promise is a promise. Doc, I reckon you're right. Of yes. course I am. Why, it's a matter of honor. Between a man and his own conscience. You speak in a language we savvy out in God's country, mister. Then what do you say? Why, my duty's as clear as a beller of a bull calf on a frosty morning. Miss Parker, would you do me the honor of handing me my boots? <laughs> I'm sorry, 
gentlemen, but I will not do it. I positively and utterly refuse even to consider doing it. And that is final. But, Dr. Carew, there's no reason to be scared of him now. No, he can't bite you. His teeth are right there on the table. I am not scared. I simply will not have anything more to do with that man. Well, in that case, Dr. Guru, I'm afraid you'd better expect trouble. Trouble? Oh, yes. Yes, there's no doubt but what he'll take your refusal as a personal insult. Oh, dear. And, of course, by the code of the West, that calls for a gunfight. Oh, dear, dear. This time with real bullets, not blanks. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I imagine he's a deadly shot. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Guru! Suppose we go pay our respects to your dear, dear friend, Buffalo Barney McClure. Oh, dear. Just stay calm now, Carew. Remember, you've got nothing to lose but your life. It could be a trap, gentlemen. A sinister, diabolical plot of some sort. I will soon find out. Here's his room. Oh, dear. Uh, Dr. Gildare, you open the door. Yeah, that's a good idea. Go ahead, Jimmy. Now, you too, eh, Brutus? All right. Well. Like this, Buffy. Oh, a shuck. In Sugarfoot, you're doing fine. Only you ought to put your other arm around like, like this. Why, Buffy, I'm surprised at you. I don't blame you, Parker. Oh. So am I. Dr. Kildare. Well, 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 now, uh, come on in, boy. Step right in. I was just giving the little lady here a lesson on the guitar. She sure does catch on fast. So I noticed. Oh! A buffalo. We brought Dr. Carew up to see you. Well, now, that is darn nice of you, boys. But where's he at? Right here behind me. He's shy, you know. Gun shy. Oh, there ain't no call to feel that way about it. Howdy, Doc. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Buffalo? Well, I better run along now. Wait just a minute now. Don't you go hightailing it off somewhere. Ordner, I want to shake your hand. Well, all right, if you insist. There. <laughs> no hard feelings, Doc, hmm? About that little joke of mine? Oh, no, not at all, Mr. Buffalo. It's quite all right. <clears throat> and really, I, I must hop along now. Now, hold your horses. I was a figuring we might have a friendly little game of poker to cement our friendship. Poker? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I only play a little bridge occasionally. Bridge? Doc, that very word makes me sick at my stomach. Miss Parker, uh, would you do me the favor to reach down inside that guitar and latch on to a deck of cards? Uh, no, now, really, Mr. Buffalo, I, I tell you, I... I, Shucks, I think that... now, don't you worry, Doc. We'll figure out some simple little easy game. Uh, yes, I know, but... And but... another thing, Miss Parker... Hand me my sex shooter there. Of course, Buck. No, no, just a moment. This won't hurt you, Doc. Only take a couple of minutes. You won't feel a thing. Now, please, come now. No, no, no. Uh, uh. You see, Doc, you wasn't in no danger. I was just using blanks. Well, uh, never mind, Buffalo. I don't think he hears you. Parker, will you go get those smelling salts again? The intrepid Dr. Carew is just swoon plumb away. Just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, good morning, Dr. Crew. Well, now, you look as though a caterpillar had just eaten your favorite gardenia. What's wrong, Carew? I have been made a victim of chicanery. Oh? I have been taken in by a card shopper, as I believe the expression is. And you, gentlemen, are to blame for it. Uh huh. Buffalo Barney, eh? What was the game? Something called Three Card Monte. It mm -hmm. sounded so simple when he explained it. Three card Monty. I thought that went out with high button shoes. <laughs> well, I can assure you that it didn't. How much, Dr. Carew? $261. Wow. Oh, good morning, Parker. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Kildare? Dr. Carew? Well, now, this doesn't sound like love's young dream. Dr. Gillespie, 
Uh, Mr. McClure was released from this hospital a couple of hours ago. Hmm? And I don't ever want to hear his name mentioned again. What happened? His wife met him in a taxi. His wife? It seems that she's a bareback rider with the same Wild West show he's in. And furthermore, she looks at... Miss Parker, there's a fellow victim of that same scoundrel. May I offer you a cup of coffee, Mr. Sullivan? Why, thank you, Dr. Carew. I heard about that card game. But after all, what he took from me was something more precious than just money. Hmm? My whole heart and soul. Oh, thank you. Well, Dr. Gillespie, it would seem that Buffalo Barney was quite an operator. I guess we're lucky he didn't put the bite on us. Jimmy, speak for yourself. What? Just before he left this morning, he sold me two tickets to that Wild West show here. Well, what's wrong with that? I, I'd kind of like to see it myself. Well, so would I. But according to the morning paper, the show wound up its New York engagement last night. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, and Barton Yarborough. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 